Welcome everyone. How are we doing today? We're going to be talking to you about different types of solar panels as it relates to the, the manufacturers, the providers of the solar panels. Those are typically the person that's um, selling you the panels, that's educating you. And today I have Maureen back with us to discuss this topic in detail because I believe this is super valuable in terms of those who are in the process right now of getting solar and you're looking at different quotes and maybe you're wondering why you got one quote here which is like ten thousand dollars more than this person quoting you right here so we're just going to deal with one aspect today which are the different types of solar panels and how that affects price and ultimately the decision you end up going with right so thank you for joining us maureen uh that's my question here today i'm in the process right now preparing to get solar and you're you're going to be helping me with this on my uh, primary residence i just moved in so i'm only like two months in and you've educated me so far that we want to wait and get a couple of fpl bills so we can see what your production looks like and then uh, what we'll potentially need for the future so basically adjusting for added consumption for example i plan on maybe getting a tesla so having the charger component that's going to require energy and you know we went back and forth on that so yeah that's that's the question i want to pass it over to you like what are different types of solar panels um and then how your company works for in regards to pricing and how that either benefits or or hurts the client yeah that's a great question. It is uh, it is something that there is a lot of variation in, and then depending again on the company. So I happen to be an independent contractor with a company that works like a general contractor. So we don't manufacture any of our own panels, and we it's like going into a car dealership that you can buy a Mercedes, you can buy a BMW. We only use top tier products but we're not just loyal or representative or I guess exclusive to one brand. We're not a, a brand. What is it? A redistributor. There's a word for it. I can't think of it right now. Um, an, ex, a, an exclusive retailer. That's the, the right oh, word. Yeah. yeah. There an are, authorized dealer. An authorized dealer. Exactly. Of just one. There are some solar companies out there. I think SunPower is one of them where they actually make their own panels. They're great they panels, but you're only getting their panels. It's it so there's there's not a lot of options and variety. So there can be pluses and minuses. If you know that you are brand loyal, you've done the research, you have that analytical geeky tech mind which I've worked with some people, they're like, do you offer these panels, this inverter, this system, this battery, this is how I want my system. I'm like, whoa, you're making my job very easy right now. I don't have to do all the explaining and worry about getting too technical. Um, and so there are some people that know, okay, I, I, I like this one brand, or I only want Tesla panels, or I only want a Tesla Powerwall. So they can go do that. And then a lot of other consultants that you work with, myself included, we have access to a variety. So I have the license to sell in 25 states virtually. And so if I were to go on and get a bill from someone that lives in Ohio or a utility bill from someone that lives in Florida, I'm going to go into my back office. I'm going to go into my system and I'm going to actually see that I have different panels and inverters and equipment available to me for the Florida quote that I'm doing versus the Ohio one that I'm doing. And that's good because in Florida, we need hurricane rated panels. There's different types of equipment. There's different types of heat indexes. There's different type of weather in these situations. In Ohio, you're gonna want ones that are built for the weight of snow and other things. So there are different types of panels. There are different types of power wattage. So 390 watt panels, 395 watt panels, 400, 405, 410. That's the range. I think there's some companies out there that are 450s. I'm not familiar with those. The ones I have access to industry cool. standard are like 390 to 410. So let's get some of this listed on here. So you mentioned there's a, a panel range. Is that in terms of the size, like the physical size of the panel or the it's type not the of size. energy? It's based on how many watts of energy that panel is producing. Okay. So what was the lowest? number 390 is the lowest i personally have access to right now gotcha so that's 390 watts per hour is that how that works or 
have it's not minute. it's not per hour it is i mean it's that's the wattage potential i have to look at this gets very scientific so gotcha. it's a 390 watt panel gotcha. the way i like to i want to keep it as simple for the that's person that's right watt watt yeah okay. 390 watt how a panel gotcha and then it goes up to you said 450. they can i that's as much as i've seen typically the 405s are the highest that i have access to the okay. rec alpha panels um think of it almost like trying to think of a great analogy. I want to stick to that car analogy. So if we talk about someone looking at different models of cars or different trims, yeah. you know, the, the 390 might be, um, would we compare this to horsepower? No, I, I just, I'm, it's not really horsepower because okay. it's, I, I want to, I'm uh, the analogy of the car analogy. Think of it as like efficiency miles to the gallon. Okay. So like there's some, there's some cars we're looking at, they might not get as many miles to the gallon. Right. You know, and so they're therefore a little bit more cost effective, mm -hmm. but the four fives it's, it's, this car is going to give you 24 highway miles to the gallon. You're going to be producing more energy for the same amount of panels. Okay. So the higher the wattage, the more, um, energy it produces. It goes to the system size. So like if someone, if someone had a 12,000 kilowatt system, you can think about it like that. They, they need, okay, we know we need a 12,000 kilowatt system for their home based on their usage. Okay. So how many 390 panels is it going to take to create 12,000 kilowatts versus how many 410 panel watt panels so, is it going to? So gonna 31 panels for 390 on mm -hmm. 12,000. So does it now come down to like aesthetic? Like if the client's like, I don't want that many panels on my roof. Is that, would that be like a, a thing that someone would say like, oh, I don't want that many panels. <laughs> that's too many. It could be. So this is where the design software is really important. Cause that's just the basic, that just calculates system size. System so size. Okay. typically a 12,000, like in Florida, a 12,000 kilowatt system, a good one with no shading is going to actually produce 16,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a year. Because so of the there, amount that the sun hits here. So that that's ideal. So what we need to do is know, okay, how much energy are they using in a year? Mm -hmm. How much do we need to have produced? And usually it's about 75% of the production we need that ends up being the size of the system. So when we know the size of the system, now we can play, okay, is it actually gonna be more cost effective for you to have a few more panels of lower wattage panels because we can get a really good deal on them and they'll still last. Oh, okay. We want the newest, best of the best, most effective, sleekest that have less degradation over time, but they're also a little bit more expensive. So these are just all things that we can show the homeowner when designing the system, sometimes we get great deals on inventory because our company does such just such massive purchasing. And so we get great cost on goods and we can relay that to the homeowner. So sometimes I've been able to design systems for people with 405 panels that are actually cheaper in the system at that time and a price per watt than some of the older 390s. I don't know why I just look at this stuff. So again, I, I like to use that car dealership analogy because you just never know when you're going to go into right. look at I... your car and you might have the exact one that you want in mind, but they're like, Hey, actually we have this crazy inventory special going on on you this trim, it. this model. Yeah. Right. It's, and it's you end up summer sales just... event, you know, it's right. our Christmas sales event. So exactly. you're saying that also exists in the solar world where sometimes it's, manufacturers set certain price, but then a general contractor like yourself, the company you represent, because of the amount of business they're doing, they're able to get, you know, behind the scenes, a better net right. price of the panel, and then they can transfer that savings to the customer and, and be right. able to offer or, something competitive. Right, or some of these companies that do the, the panel manufacturing, they might be having the, just like thinking of cars again, you know, they might be having all these brand new, beautiful Kias sport. I'm just going to use, keep using Kia Sportage because that's the one I got last year. I got a, a 2023, even though the 2024s were already out because mm -hmm. to me, they looked almost the same. And I knew that they were giving good deals because they wanted to get those out get of, of inventory mm -hmm. to 
to make space for the newest model. So that's what happens, I think, sometimes with these, you know, panel producing companies and inverters is they might have this really high end panel, but they're having the newest technology coming out. And so they're giving deals to people like us, the general contractors, the retailers to just get all that stuff out of inventory. So if you are considering going solar and you are working with someone like myself who has the ability to show transparently like the back end cost stuff and not because there's always a cost too, because some solar consultants just want more commissions. So they're never going to show you the back end. But if you can actually see the back end and the cost and they can break it down for you, ask, ask, hey, are there any current inventory specials going on right now? Because you might be willing to have a, a, a few more panels that are slightly less wattage, even though they're really great, if it's going to save you potentially thousands and thousands of dollars because there's an inventory special at the time. Yeah. Because these the all of them, whether it's the 390s, 395s, 410s, they're all designed to last a minimum of 30 years. Yeah. So really as good. long as it's going to do the job for at least 30 years and going to produce as much energy as you need, be careful about wanting this sleekest, nicest, biggest, baddest, and bad. Yeah. You know, don't fall for that sales trap too. It's already, a, it's already a reasonable investment. And most people that go solar are doing it because of the cost savings. So if you can still have a system that is producing exactly what your home needs, even if it's not the newest, most updated panel that is giving you the highest um, mileage per hour. Here's another an analogy. You don't want to spend all the money on the car that's going to give you 40 miles an hour on the highway versus 30 miles an hour on the highway if now you can only you only use premium gas and the cost of gas isn't going to save you as much money anymore and that's the whole reason you wanted an economic vehicle so let's do a little recap here all all yeah. panels are uh built to last you said a minimum of 30 years yeah the good, the good ones that should yeah. be bare minimum. They, a lot of them will say, you know, that they have the company will do like a 25 year warranty. The right. people themselves will have a 10 year manufacturer warranty or five year, but systems in general should be lasting 30 years and beyond. And you will get a little bit of degradation too. So a good solar consultant should explain that. Like that is something that some of these newer okay. panels have is you know, they will still be operating at 92% efficiency after 25 years versus like 86%, which is what some of the older ones. So that is some of the benefits of the newer, the newer technology is there's less degradation over time. But again, you're just aware of that when you do all your Got it. cost analysis. So is this true? The lesser the wattage on the panel, the lesser the cost? Typically, unless there's an inventory special. Yes. Unless there's, okay. Or so if, if it's brand too. You know, okay. sometimes like RECs, because they have such a, a brand yeah. or like Teslas, you know, they they can get away with trying to charge more because people tend to, to gravitate towards those brand names, even though the technology is not any different. Okay. So let's go through those those different brand names for the manufacturers. So yeah. what are the, I guess, general types that most panels right now are being sold? So you said, you mentioned Tesla. So Tesla has their own panel, right? Tesla has their own. Because they um, built their own. So we just I call that Tesla. Of, yeah. And I don't know of anyone else this I don't know of any other companies at this point. I could, I could be wrong. If you are in the solar industry and you're seeing this, please feel yeah. free to comment. You said that Sun Power. I, Sun Power has their own. There's Sun Power. There is Canadian Solar. There is Panasonic makes their own panels. There's RECs, which we have access to, which I love. That stands for Renewable Energy Corporation. There is Jinko which I've also designed a lot of systems that have Jinko panels. How do you spell uh, that? G... J, J I N K O. J I N K O. All right. Yeah. So, we got are, so these are the brand names, right? Yeah. There's Q cells. I've designed a lot of systems with Q, Q cells. Q and then cell. Yeah. Kind of together one word, but capital okay. Q. C. Yeah. Uh, so Q cell. Yeah. So I personally cells. designed systems with Canadian solar, RECs, Jinkos, Q cells. They're all great. SunPower is their own manufacturer dealer. So I don't have access to those. Tesla, same thing. same thing. 
Yeah. And then there's some other ones on the market that are their own manufactured dealer. And then some other companies like myself, where they can utilize any panels that are open to retail purchasing, installation and usage by installers and solar companies that aren't all a one-stop shop like Tesla and SunPower. Right. Momentum. Yeah. Okay. So and there's more like LG makes their own solar panels, but the, those are, I would say are the main, the main ones that I'm aware of. And I hear of all the time. Kind of like the main, right. Main players. And so there's times where the manufacturers are selling to the sellers, the general contractors, right? Like no customer can just buy direct to the manufacturer. They have to go through like an agency, a broker, let's, you know, kind of comparing it to a, a car dealer. Like you can't go directly to Mercedes Corporation, buy a car, you have to go to an authorized Mercedes dealer to buy your Mercedes, right? This works the same way here, right? I can't just call Elon and say, give me, you know, your Tesla panels. So I, I gotta work with a certified Tesla solar consultant, let's just say someone on the phone and they walk me through the process or sun power or in your case you have more options that you can work with instead of being captive so to speak to, to one option that gives you kind of like an upper hand where it's like okay maybe someone quoted got a quote here and you're able to get that same quote but possibly for lesser costs mm -hmm. um, and then also educating the client on hey you know you were quoted on these these panels that are like the tippy top, right? The, the highest performance, but based on, you know, location, home, financial, you know, capability, it just may not make sense. We can actually get really, you know, similar results. They, they're both going to last really long. You know, you're going to get these warranties um, and, it, and we can potentially save thousands of dollars if your concern. So for the majority of people watching this are looking to save money rather than have something aesthetic, you know, the sexiest thing, so to speak. Right. Right. And, and they're still I mean, again, going back to the car analogy, you know, my roommate um, and her fiance are car shopping right now and thinking about when they when they get married what type of car and his first or hers and they're both looking at you know mercedes and she's looking at this um i don't know what model it is like a mercedes suv mm. i was like oh, those are really nice it's definitely way nicer than yeah. my key <laughs> but i had to think about when i bought my kia what what was my it gets me for me to be i enjoy being inside of it the mileage is great i drive a ton i'm also traveling half the time the payment that I'm making on it was in my budget even better. So my primary motivator was to have a car that I enjoy, but also save as much money as possible yeah. in that. So I can get, you know, car envy by looking at her car hunting and stuff. But at the end of the day, both vehicles, hers and mine, brand new, like they they're serving the purpose that I needed it to serve. Right. It's getting me around. I enjoy being in it. it works has the little bells and whistles that I wanted. You know, it has the car Apple play. It has the main things. I didn't, you know, it's not like I'm rolling the windows down in a new car. <laughs> right. And here, here's another thing that just came up for those that are listening, those that are homeowners right now. Um, think to yourself, like, is this my forever home? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to need to move into a bigger home because my family's expanding? Like I'm, I'm young right now. So I plan on having kids, but the home that I'm in right now would be good enough to have like two, maybe three kids in it before they have to start sharing rooms, you know? And if I wanted to go bigger, like I have a good friend of mine, a shout out to Dapo, who is currently looking at getting a bigger property he's like i need five bedrooms he's got four kids him the wife so they're bigger family they need to get a bigger home now compared to the home that he's been in so that's something to consider those of you that have been living in your home for maybe two three four years and maybe you plan on moving to a different state maybe you plan on moving into a different town different city bigger home or maybe a smaller home whatever it may be um again for the majority of people we're looking at Probably, how can I do solar, be efficient with the production that I need, right? And then how do I essentially pay the, the, the least amount for it? Because generally speaking here, they're all going to guarantee production, whether I buy a Kia or a Mercedes new, they're both going to drive from point A to point B. They're both yep. going to get me to where I, 
I need to get to. Granted, you can make the argument that the Mercedes would last longer, but that's where we're now getting into an apples to orange, oranges comparison, because in the solar industry, it would seem, I guess I would compare it to like impact windows and doors. They're all gonna do the job. Like even your not, uh, from what I've been learning about impact windows and doors, you got like this, this I think it's, I don't know if it's um, pressure rating. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's called the pressure rating. And so obviously the higher the pressure rating, the stronger the, the window is gonna be. But then you get into regulation, like you had mentioned in Florida, you can't just put any panel on the roof. It has to be hurricane versus another state might have a different regulation, as you mentioned, something that could handle the weight of snow, right? So it's gonna be relevant to the the area that you live in. So yeah. specifically in Florida, you have to have a minimum pressure rating that's by the city or by the state, I think of like 40 or 50 or something like, or 55. And then maybe the manufacturer does a higher, you know, just to have that peace of mind. So I think it's gonna, that's gonna be the same here when you're looking at panels. If you went with the 390 watt versus the 405, they're both gonna do the same job. They're both gonna last really long. Um, it, it's just a, it's either an aesthetic look and feel like, oh, having lesser panels maybe, that'd be one thing. And then two, you mentioned the word degradation. Does that have to do with in the first year, it's pumping out 390 uh, watts per panel, but maybe 10 years from now, it's doing what, 385 or 380? Is that what you meant it's by a, degradation? Each panel, yeah, each panel has a formula and a calculation. So it's over time. It's like a 0.2% less production each year each over year. the next year. So, you know, like these RECs that are out right now, they will still be producing at 92% their efficiency, you know, okay. 25 years from now, 30 25. years. From yeah, that's insane. There's a degradation rating and formula on the spec sheet for, for each panel. And again, that may not be a problem for the majority of people that, you know, are, are not going to live in their current home for their entire life. I would say if you're going to be in the home for your, the rest of your life, you're like, I ain't moving here. This is this is where I'm going to raise my kids and my and, and this is it. Then would you would you say, yeah, probably go with a, a higher rating yeah. panel that's going to last longer. Right. Gonna... And, you know, a, a good solar consultant will sit down with you as well, too, and be like, OK, what are your plans for the future? Um, are you going to, you know, are you expanding? Uh, maybe, maybe they're designing a system that's the right size for them now. And in 10 years, they're going to be empty nesters. So now they're even going to be racking up more credits, or maybe we throw a couple extra panels on knowing there's going to be a Tesla in two years or something. But what I like to do is I like to overshoot anyway. First, I account for, okay, what are your current needs? And then is there anything in the next couple of years that's also going to increase your usage? And so we, I, I call that like ground zero. Then once I know ground zero's usage, I always like to add an extra panel or two for a little bit of cushion. You never know yeah. if there's going to be some crazy weather uh, system where the electric heat's going to be on in the winter or in the summer with the AC or a family's going to come into town to visit or they are going to decide to get that electric car. I just always like to have a little wiggle room. And then we design the system based on that. Don't even really want to think about degradation. If 20 okay. years down the road, you're still in the home and you know that you've been right on the edge of usage and it'd be nice to have a couple more. You can always add a few more panels to the system or do a little mini system and the technology may be oh. so different by then anyway. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. knows? You might be able to have some little microchip that you flip on to, you know, I 20 years is a long way yeah, away. It's as far as I'm concerned, that is so irrelevant to mm -hmm. the needs for now and in the in the next decade even. Yeah, I was going to, you know, you bring up a good point. Like, you know, 10, 15 years from now, we don't know what kind of technology Elon Musk is going to create or other people. They're going to come out with some really cool things to harness the, the sun's power, right? So could there be a possibility where the government may be provides some type of rebate program where it's like you can replace your panels for, for these and, and maybe get a better deal. Um, you know, once certain, say 25 years from now, 30 years from now, when those panels have kind of run through its, you know, lifespan and it's time to get more, there might be, you know, programs in place by then. So yeah, it, it almost seems irrelevant to be worried about 
how it's going to perform year over year. Um, it, you, it's actually better to consider, like you said, know what the ground zero, your base foundation is for your current energy consumption, and then overshoot, have a little bit more for that space. Now, final question here before we go is regarding the sun's influence on the production of the solar panel. So I guess, you know, being here in Florida, we get a lot of sun here. So does the sun play into like you're saying the the panel using the 390 example again 390 uh watts if the sun is shining all day right or for for so many hours is there a possibility that that panel would produce more or store more energy like how does that work there like how does the sun play yeah, and so, yeah so but this goes for all panels so kind of going back to that same thing in the beginning right if we if we know that you need sixteen thousand kilowatt hours a year of electricity like for example i was just looking at someone's bill this morning I called FPL because I'm doing a quote for them. And so I was able to call the utility company and then get the exact exact usage for each month over the last 12 months because I need that. So they used 16,790 kilowatts of electricity last year. But I also noticed that in July, they only used 490 and every other month was like 1800, 1500, 1700, 2000. I thought, well, July is the hottest month here that should be the highest. So I messaged her and I said, were you guys out of town July last year? She said, yes. I said, okay, great. So I know I really want to design a system for at least 18,000 kilowatts because that's typical of them being home every month with, with the, with the heat here. But because it's Florida and the sun beats down all the time, and there's not a lot of partial shading. I know that I'm the system size is going to be about 75% of that because of the weather here. And again, the, the system will show me in the design it, software. So it, we'll ex explain that because I feel like I'm not understanding. And I think the there's best, some people like me are like, wait, 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 wait. I lost her there. I can do maybe is pull a picture up really quick. Yeah, like explain the 75%. So in your example, you said that homeowner, well, their yeah. system needs to be 18,000 kilowatt hours what's the abbreviation kw like that kilowatt. and then yeah. h they, they use eighteen thousand kilowatt hours of electricity a year so if you look at your energy your utility bill from the utility company uh -huh. you will see that it says you used 984 kw um okay. let me pull it up and then let's say in this example what um what type of panel did we go with in, in this? Um, like I'm the, trying like to, the, yeah, sorry. Do you will like, let me see if I can share my screen really quick. Okay. So okay. just see, this is just the chart. This is literally what I was looking at. It doesn't show their information or anything. So let's see if we can pull this up. Um, window. Here we go. Can you pull that up on the screen? Yeah. Okay. So this is exactly what I was looking at, but I always call the utility company because this was on her bill that she sent me. I always call the utility company just to get the exacts because I don't, you know, sometimes if you're, if I'm estimating these lines, it can be off, you know, by, by a few hundred and it doesn't work. But see here in July, mm -hmm. that's why I was like, mm, this is not normal for summer. <laughs> so, but see, this is kilowatt hours. That's what this is. And so that's how your utility company bills you. You get paid. I mean, you get charged how much kilowatt hours of electricity you're using every month. And so when you get your bill, you'll see how much they're charging you. So right now in Florida, we're getting charged about 17 cents a kilowatt hour. So when you go get gas, you're getting charged based on how many, how many gallons you fill your tank up with. When you get your electricity bill every month, you're getting charged based on how many kilowatt hours of electricity that month you used. And it's usually somewhere in the sense right now in Florida, it's 17 cents a kilowatt hour. In parts of California, it's 58 cents a kilowatt hour. I see. So in, in the example earlier, this home uses about 18,000 kilowatt hours a year. Yeah. What type of panel, um, you know, we just use any number between 390 and 405. Like what, what would be the kilowatt panel we'd use? Any of them. That's the whole thing. So I would go in and actually see what the pricing is. If I can get good pricing for the most effective, like okay. that's what I design it with. So let's say we did 390. Yeah. So 18,000 
divided by 390. So they'd have 46, maybe 47 panels. No, less than that. that, that how that works? No. Okay. Uh, this less. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, Go ahead, explain. This is where all the formulas get crazy on the back end because it's, again, the, the system size in Florida, the system size probably for this would be around 14,000 kilowatts. And then I know because the amount of sun, the angle, the shading, a 14,000 kilowatt system is actually going to produce probably 18,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a year. Okay, so now we're looking at say I'm 36 panels. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up. So like- So no, you're saying good. that- You know, it's even, good screw. That's why you guys can just call me so I can do it, right? You don't have to figure this out on your own. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot, yeah. I get it. But this is cool though. This is this, this, I'm, I'm this really like, I'm it's so cool. curious, right? Yeah. So let's say we have 36 panels. Mm -hmm. Each of those panels produce 390 kilowatts per panel. Is that? That's the size. They can produce more based on this is where the force. The so that's my, so, right. So that final it's almost question like that's the about, engine right? capacity. Okay. This is another way to explain it. It's like, that's, that's the, we might have to do another video, like a little short on how to explain it. Cause I don't want to <laughs> say it the wrong way. I know in my brain, how I explain it to my homeowners in a layman's term. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if there's some to really geeking engineer out there. And I'm completely like, if you're mortified by hearing me say it this way, then you can private message me and I apologize. But the best way is like, okay, this is almost like the capacity. So thinking about, I have, uh, I have a 12 gallon engine, but I'm going to get different ranges to that. I might get 300 miles to the tank or 200 miles to the tank, depending on how I'm driving, is it highway, is it city? How hard am I pressing on the gas? What are the weather conditions? How am I maintaining the vehicle? Has the oil been changed, right? So it's okay. a 12 gallon tank that I know is gonna give me a bare minimum, but there's also more, like there's a range in how much miles yeah, to the get. tank I'm actually gonna get. Yeah. So there's, there's the size, the kilowatt size of the system, uh -huh. and then there's the kilowatt hours of electricity or energy it's producing based on various factors, roof angle, shading, temperature, weather, uh, weather patterns. So that's where all the formulas go in, in our design software tools, where we look at the roof, the location, what's the tilt, what's the azimuth of the roof? It is it a flat roof. What are the angles we pull from 25 years of historical weather data for that zip code to look at yeah. annual cloud so we're able to give a fairly good calculated projection yeah um, and that's yeah. the cool thing so like I'm gonna pull one of these up pretty quickly so you um, could also say that the positioning of your panels yes all of it influence how it performs yeah so let me let me pull one up you know this might be another fun if you guys think this is a good idea yeah let us know in the comments it. I'm just naturally I'm, curious but I'm yeah I'm, you know, if we're boring you out, let us know. But I know those that are going to be spending 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 grand over a long period of time financing or leasing or paying cash for these solar panels, yeah. like me, you kind of want to know uh, the general gist of things. And, and then how can I, yeah. you know, fully optimize this? Right? So I'm let's, sure. Go ahead. let me share my screen. Okay. I'm going to see if I can mess with, this is a one that I already sold a lease on and designed, but I want to see if it lets me just show you in live time um, window. Okay. Let's see if this works. Let me share that. Okay. So here is an actual home and the system it's actually this one's being installed we signed contracts in january this one's actually being installed thursday this is in florida this is a lease but see you can see right here what i'm talking about the system size is 13.26 kilowatts its estimated yearly production is 18,830 kilowatt hours okay these are the jinko 390 panels there's 34 of them okay. and the end inverters Going in here, you see right now the pricing. This is what I'm talking about. Mm. 34 cents versus 45 four cents for the alphas versus the Canwa Q cells. So you can see these are both 405s. They're both great panels. These are 45 cents, 40 cents. These have a little bit less degradation. But what happens, 
you can see right here, let's, I want you to look at the production. So this is what the system does because it's calculating the roof. It knows the angle and everything else. So you should see it update with the production. You see this? Yeah. Because now I have 34 panels. I didn't change the number of panels, but these are 405s. It went from producing 18,000 something to 19,554. Gotcha. And now the size increased because it's 34 times 405 versus 34 times 390. Mm -hmm. So, but he doesn't need, so then if he wants the RECs, we might drop it off. I may mess with it and then go in here and take off a panel. Okay, now it's 19,000. So I can use this real time and show people. And then we can also go down and look at what the price difference would be too. So we can go through and do all the calculations and say, okay, what, what kind of panels do you want? Why is this important to you? How can we add and take some off and remove knowing what our target production is? That's the most important thing. We want to know what are we trying to produce every year? So your system is producing all your needs and you're not renting electricity from the utility company anymore. And then we can go into types of panels, batteries and inverters and how many and aim for aesthetics and also I just explain everything and sometimes there's just great deals and so it's it makes more sense to have two extra panels on 390s if I can get the Jinkos for 20 cents and the system's half the price. Yeah. So and again this is always changing. This is different every month. This is like oil. It's like oil pricing. You know, oil, yeah. you know gases can go up, they can go down. So yeah. this this is very similar. Okay, very yeah. Very interesting. So yeah. to, to kind of wrap up my understanding as it relates to the sun itself, the way the sun influences the production of my panels is based on really how, how much the sun is shining um, throughout the day and the angle at which those panels are facing. If it's fully maximizing, really getting hit, uh, majority of the time, no shading, that sort of thing. Even if I have a quote unquote smaller system, say less panels, specifically in Florida, because of how long the sun shines throughout the year here, I could have less panels, but still get what I need and then some. It's kind of yeah. like what you're getting into. So it's like, hey, hey, homeowner, we actually don't need 34 panels. Maybe we only need 29, lesser system, but th this is going to capture more energy because we're talking energy now right? Like in, in how that then converts into what you end up actually using. Cause what if you are a homeowner that travels, I'd say, say you say you travel six to eight weeks out of the year. So that's, that's almost two months. You're not actually in the home using that. Right. And we see that, that dip. So that's really interesting. Uh, this is, this is good. Anything good. else you want to share with us before we close out here? I don't think so. I think I, I gave enough for people to be like, please stop talking for now. Yeah, this is enough, enough to chew on for sure. So go ahead and comment comment below your thoughts, <laughs> your questions. If you'd like us to make a certain answer a certain question or do another case study video, maybe in a different state, send us your feedback, send us your requests, your comments, because that's the type of content that we're going to be delivering to you. Right in the, yeah. in the beginning, we, we were, we're literally creating this content based off of questions that I personally have because I myself will be getting solar panels. So these are the questions that I'm asking and then questions that Maureen's clients bring up and then case studies that she's working on herself along with some of you that have decided to book a call and work with Maureen and now she's helping you get solar panels in place. So that's our action step here today is after watching this video, maybe a couple others that Maureen and I have done. If you're at that point, then your next action step is to just simply book a call with Maureen. You can click the link below. I'll have it on the screen and in the comment section. And you can jump on like, I think, what is it like 30, 45 minute call to just kind of get all the details, see what it is, what you want. You know, Maureen's going to be asking you a, a, just a ton of questions to gather as much data as we, we can to make the best decision, you know, for your finances mm -hmm. and for, you know, you just being more optimized in your home, uh, more mm -hmm. energy efficient, going green, all these other benefits that come with going 
solar. Yeah, that first initial call, honestly, 20 minutes, okay. you know, to even see if it makes. And then what I would do is ask you some basic questions. And if it seems like something that would be worth getting some initial numbers and quotes, um, I'll just get your utility bill, ask you some questions so I can kind of do my end. And then we come back and hop on like a call or a Zoom that's a little longer because I can expensive. do exactly what I just did with this, show your home. Okay. Start to kind of customize things to, to then get really solid numbers to see if it financially makes sense. So yeah, Beautiful. but the initial calls quick, easy, pain-free. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Maureen. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you everyone. You. Again, please comment below. Let us know how we're doing and comment with questions, concerns, doubts, fears, whatever it is that um, you're in your current process of you getting different quotes and action step booking a call with Maureen. With that being said, have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.